What's up guys, Joe Garth here, creator of Brushify.io. Welcome to another episode of Brushify Bootcamp. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about tessellation. Tessellation is a really expensive feature, so it's one that you need to really carefully consider whether or not you actually wanna use it in your game. If you really think that tessellation is required and you wanna get lots and lots of detail out of your landscape and stuff like that, I'm here to tell you that Brushify is fully compatible with tessellation and it's actually very, very simple to activate. In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a puddles layer and also how to turn on tessellation with Brushify. If you guys like tutorials like this and want to see more in the future, make sure you subscribe by hitting the subscribe button below and uh, ticking the bell notification icon. Uh, that just means that you get notified whenever I create a new video. You can also go to www.brushify.io forward slash bootcamp and uh, that'll give you, uh, that'll put you on the mailing list. And that means that whenever there's a new sale or a new product coming out or a new tutorial, uh, you'll get an email notification of that too. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's get started. So this is where we got to last time. Uh, and as you can remember, we created a custom paint layer with roughness on it. So yeah, roughness is a really cool effect because it lets you put a bit of, sort of wetness and realism into your materials. And uh, yeah, so what I thought I'd do this episode is take this sort of a step further and create a slightly more advanced material uh, with this sort of rough wetness effect uh, and also using tessellation. And we're sort of gonna combine roughness and tessellation together uh, to create a new material that uses, uh, that, that has actual puddles in it, that, you, that has reflections. So just a little side note, if you don't actually want to follow the tutorial and you're really just interested in seeing a sort of uh, example, if you get the latest version of Brushify, the puddles layer is actually included, uh, and you can just use that to simply paint down uh, the puddles, um, which are the sort of result of this tutorial. Um, and yeah, then you'll be able to uh, you know see how those are set up, and ult obviously ultimately turn on tessellation uh, and use those with the material. Um, tessellation is actually not turned on here, uh, but later I'm going to actually show you how to enable it. Uh, and use it sort of in conjunction with um, with this uh, with this paint layer. So yeah, on with the tutorial. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, so I'm going to go to my content menu, and we're going to go to materials. And the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the mud layer, uh, and that's this one right here that we've already got painted down. And I'm just going to start by duplicating uh, this layer, and I'm going to call this one puddles. And I'm going to do the same thing then for the mud normals. And instead of mud, just call it puddles. And then again, the same thing, just duplicate for roughness, puddles. And I'm just going to remember to delete the one every time. I forgot to do it on the normals. And then uh, last one is height. So yeah. The one puddles. Okay, so now you should have basically four uh, newly created um, material functions for the base color, the height, the normals, and the roughness. And I'm just gonna right click and go save with those. And yeah, so I'm gonna open up the MF puddles uh, material instance, um, material function, sorry. And inside you can see this is now just the duplicate of the mud layer. Um, and you know, just like before, we've got global, macro, and tiling. Global, macro, and tiling textures that are in there. And those are the level of detail textures. So we're gonna change the close-up uh, detail texture uh, to a different texture. Now I've actually already made uh, the textures for this puddle layer and imported those. So they're inside the textures puddles folder. And uh, I'm just gonna go through these and kind of explain how they work. Uh, so this is the first texture. It's basically just a mud texture where certain areas of it I've kind of made dark. And these areas are going to be the puddles. So I actually had a, a really nice texture that I captured uh, that had some of these puddles existing inside of there. And I just used Photoshop uh, to kind of create a layer uh, and kind of mask out where I really want the puddles to show up. And then just make them dark in the diffuse, uh, in the albedo texture. And then, uh, yeah, I actually... It got that uh, the mask information from the height map here, and that's what I actually used to create these kind of splotches in the diffuse in the albedo, and um, yeah, and basically um, yeah, that, that's really very useful. And I also used that mask uh, on the normal map, 
Uh, and you can see here that where the puddles are, I've actually removed all of the normal information to make it completely flat. And that's because you want the surface of the water uh, not to be very rough like this and have all of this light sort of refracting in different ways and reflecting off the surface in different ways. You actually want the, the puddled areas to become very, very flat. So yeah, last but not least is the roughness texture. So if I just open up that. So you can see that again, I'm using the height map as a sort of mask to create the puddles and just make those really, really dark. Uh, basically the whiter areas are more rough areas and the darker areas are more polished areas. So we want the puddles to be very, very, very polished. So they're almost black. And yeah, I literally just took this uh, height map and then sort of crunched it down in Photoshop and applied that as a mask onto the uh, roughness texture. So yeah, uh, and those are the sort of four main textures. Uh, those are the four sort of changes that you're gonna need to make to your textures in order to get that sort of puddles effect and uh, you know, get it looking, um, get it looking cool. So I'm just gonna go back to the content browser uh, and I'm gonna open up uh, the MF puddles. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace uh, the um, detail texture here for the mud with the puddles detail texture. And then that's great. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from mud normals to always the, you know, all of these, the puddles normals. So puddles normals, puddles roughness. Uh, so it uses those instead of the mud ones. And um, height. And yeah, that's basically everything I need to do in here. So just hit save. And that's the base color uh, material function done. And then I'm going to open up the height material function and I'm going to go, then go to the detail texture again and same thing I'm just gonna go into my puddles textures folder and then replace out the height map and then hit save great so that's that done and same with the puddles normals you know these are just very very simple just switching out the textures for, for from mud to the puddles textures and just hitting save every time and this is just the you know really easy way just to like switch all of these and hit save. Okay, fantastic. So that's all of the material functions done. And they're all inside of that functions folder, uh, materials folder. And uh, yeah, we can now uh, start to hook this up with the uh, landscape system, just like we did in the custom paint layers tutorial. So we go landscape functions and we open up MF landscape layers. And yeah, this is the super important place where all of the landscape blends and materials are defined in Brushify. So we're just going to go to the base materials and we're going to layer blend and we're going to add a new uh, layer and we're going to call this puddles and we're going to take, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take the mud one, mud material function, copy paste it, switch it for the MF puddles material function put that last in the list and we're going to connect the diffuse output to the layer. Okay, great. And for the slopes, uh, we're just going to add a new layer blend. Again, call it puddles. Super simple. And then I think on the slope, we'll just use the rock because we don't really need anything else there. And then once that's done, so yeah, you should have your slope connected and your base color, uh, base materials connected. Don't need to do anything undirectional. So that's everything done. So it's all hooked up to the system and hit save. And that's gonna apply it. Just gonna close down that. Give it a bit of time to sort of compile through a bunch of the shaders. The shader compiling will be much faster though, depending on you know how few materials you've actually used. Okay, great. So now it's compiled. I'm going to go up to landscape and then paint. Now, if you get something like this, where it's not found uh, what the puddle, it seems to have like added something, or if it's just completely missing, uh, just try to do this. Try either going off and going back on again. Uh, and if that still doesn't work, go to your, um, yeah, just any of your kind of materials, uh, um, yeah, any of your materials and just kind of make it make a change somewhere and hit save again and it'll just sort of reapply the material 
and uh, yeah, just, just try compiling the shaders again. Because it just takes, sometimes the system's a little bit slow, it just takes a bit of time to um, to catch something. So yeah, you can see now it's actually caught the layer info, uh, the layer blend here, and it, it has actually come through into the interface. Uh, it's just something slow about the way that it initializes that. Okay, so now I'm gonna try painting down this new mud layer. And yeah, you can see that there is actually a really cool, uh, it's actually found a really cool usage for this texture. So, so let's explain exactly what's going on here. So we haven't got tessellation turned on yet, uh, but what is happening is it's looking really cool and, and kind of bumpy because we've got lots of information going on in the normal map. And we've got, and we're making use of the uh, reflections um, in the puddles themselves using roughness. So if I actually go to the roughness, so here you can actually see that the roughness map um, actually contains the sort of information, and you can see that you know the puddled areas are really really dark, almost black, uh, and so sort of fully reflective, whereas the sort of muddy areas are you know a little bit rougher. And uh, yeah, that's what really creates this nice sort of reflection effect um, that lets you sort of see uh, real reflections in the puddles. And actually I can take a, you know, cube or something and, um, you, know, or a, you know, a real object in the world and I can actually see the reflection of that object through screen space reflections uh, inside the puddles. Um, I also love how this works with, uh, if I just grab a mannequin, um, Characters mesh mannequin, and just drag him into the scene. Uh, and you can also sort of see the the uh, a player or a mannequin basically like reflected in the reflected in the puddles. So if you see that right there. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. It adds a lot of realism to your uh, landscapes. You know when you've got really really detailed textures like this on the ground, um, just adds so much. Um, you know, just a little bit more of extra realism. And uh, yeah, so getting to the point of this tutorial, tessellation. So how can we make this even crazier? So we've actually got a lot of detail already coming out from the sort of normal maps, from the roughness, but I think to take it to the next level, um, we really wanna make it so that this isn't just a flat texture. You know, if we look really close, it's just a flat texture. All of this kind of detail and bumpiness is, is coming just from normals. Um, so yeah let's make this a little bit more next gen. So yeah, to enable tessellation, the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the content browser and I'm gonna to go to Brushify Materials Landscape. And I'm gonna open up M underscore landscape. So this is a sort of, uh, you know, kind of main Brushify landscape material. There's a lot of stuff going on here. We've got sort of flow maps, directional mapping, um, We've got, um, you know, derived specularity. We've got all of the sort of blending that takes place between all the maps. And this isn't something that you need to fully understand. You know, this is this was basically months and months and months of work, you know, and years of development to kind of get to the point where this is set up in this certain way. But yeah, but really what's important to you is just this little node right here. So if you look that the, there's a, there's a parameter here called uh, world displacement and tessellation multiplier. And those are actually grayed out right now, but you can see there's actually an input called MF underscore tessellation. And that is a material function for tessellation, which is basically, you know, it's taking the output of the layer blend from the, you know, that really important MF landscape layers uh, material function where everything's blended together. And it's taking this output world displacement and it's putting that inside of this material. So in order to actually enable tessellation, all we need to do is just click on the main M underscore landscape node, and you just wanna scroll down right here, and you wanna to go to tessellation, and hit, uh, no, instead of no tessellation, you wanna change that to flat tessellation. And just leave everything else the same. Of course, you can play with the other settings on here, but the defaults are perfectly fine for now. And then just hit uh, save. And that will also just apply uh, that change to your landscape material. This might take a bit of time because it has to sort of recompile uh, a few settings and things. Um, so yeah. And the next thing to do is while that's compiling, let's just wait for that. So that's actually gonna that's gonna turn on the tessellation in the actual shader. But 
it's actually not enabled by default in the material instance. So you can see that your landscape's actually got the MI landscape material instance applied to it. And that's right here in the folder, usually right next to M underscore landscape. So we've enabled it in the M landscape, but now we need to actually open the MI landscape material instance. This is just the little material instance that the actual terrain uses, and it's the one where all of the settings are kept for the terrain. So this is the one you're actually, you know, going to be using to kind of modify settings all the time. And uh, yeah, you can see here that there's actually a parameter here, enable tessellation, and that's actually unticked. So yeah, first step is, of course, in your landscape, make sure it's enabled flat tessellation. And then in your material instance, make sure you enable tessellation. And then that's going to compile a few more shaders. But if you look now, we can actually see we've got some bumps going on on the terrain, which is really cool. Um, and this effect is, you know, it's one of those really, um, yeah, it's a really cool effect. And then you can actually tweak that effect uh, inside the material instance as well. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller. Uh, and you can see there are options now for height. So if I make that like 12, you can see it's kind of uh, if I make it really extreme, whoa, it's like turning them into mountains. The default something like 20, 23, uh, so 23. Uh, I think about maybe 12 is good for, for what we've got here. Uh, we don't want it to be too crazy. And uh, yeah, uh, and you can also tweak this offset here as well. Uh, this is actually just the amount of offset. You ca you've got to be careful not to go too high with it, because if you go too high with it, you can get some artifacts like these um, little cracks. So usually best to keep the offset as, as low as possible um, in order to you know not have any um, glitches and stuff. But yeah, you can usually find you know a very sort of sweet spot um, that both looks good and you know has has the right settings. There are also of course options for the optimization. Uh, so if we go up to the wireframe, uh, you can see there's actually a ton of optimization going on in the material here. So as I sort of move towards the um, the landscape, you can see that it's kind of tessellating more and more and more. And as I kind of move away, uh, though the detail is then being reduced and it's going back to being a normal landscape. So this kind of optimization is super important because it means you sort of get the best of both worlds. Like up close, you'll get these amazing little bits of detail. And then as you kind of the player gets further away, that terrain kind of reverts back to normal and becomes, uh, you know, very cheap for the uh, GPU again. So yeah, it's it's a very important um, effect. And yeah, of course you can tweak uh, that optimization right here. So if I change uh, near tessellation, uh, this is just going to change the sort of amount in uh, in the foreground. And then there's also far tessellation. So you can see this actually changes how far back this tessellation is going to affect um, the terrain. So if I move all the way back here, it might be easier to see this. Um, you can see that back there, there's actually still tessellation going on. Whereas if I change it back to the default, it's now it's now not got anything applied. Let's just exaggerate that. Uh, so yeah, that's a really, really crazy example now. Uh, you can see just what's possible you know, by tweaking this distant amount. But if you really, you know, if you don't want to play with the optimization too much, if you if you just want things to look good, I recommend just setting them to the, the defaults um, because those were very carefully chosen and um, they usually won't cause any problems. But of course, you know, the option for optimization is already there and, uh, you know, you, you, can, uh, you can just make, you know, a little bit more detail further out from the player and just play, you know, I, I recommend like maybe just try changing it from 0.2 maybe to like one. And you know, if that's not an issue for your hardware, then it's fine. But I don't think in most cases you need to have tessellation going all the way back into the mid ground. I think it's something that should just be around the sort of foreground and uh, you can get pretty much good details um, when the player gets very, very close. So yeah, um, that's tessellation with Brushify. It's already sort of built in. It's just something you can li literally just enable and you know, then you have um, tessellation, um, you know, right there. And there are example paint layers as well um, that you can, you know, like this one uh, that have roughness and tessellation. Um, yeah, there's also uh, a parameter here, fade distance. Um, 
and this is, you know, similar thing. It's more for optimization. Um, but yeah, it lets you basically extend out um, the tessellation even further. Uh, but yeah, the default, again, is just very, very close. And the sort of far and near tessellation parameters, those are for sort of the uh, amount in the distance. The fade is more of a sort of like general, you know, how 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 is the gradient sort of fade fall off of the tessellation into the distance. Um, but yeah, play around with the values, see if you can find, uh, you know, values that you think look good. Uh, but yeah, I definitely recommend just, you know, try the defaults first because uh, those will give you some really good results out of the box. So I'm just going to jump into the uh, game mode a bit and sort of run around and we'll see how that looks. So yeah, it definitely gives a lot of cool little details. Um, you know, these sort of bumpy puddles look really, really good. And I'm just going to exaggerate a little bit more by increasing the height. So maybe let's go up to 20. Save that. But yeah, it's a little bit more exaggerated even. And you know, this is, you know, a very, very detailed effect. If you want to get very photorealistic results, uh, something like this is definitely required. It, it can make a huge, huge difference, uh, especially if you're using, uh, you know, sort of scan textures like these or photo textures like these. Um, uh, or, you know, if you try something from Quixel Megascans, or if you try something from textures.com uh, that's, you know, got some really, really cool um, physically based uh, rendering settings and captures uh, from the real world, of course, that's going to look really, really good. Uh, this one's just uh, sort of a texture that I've created, you know, kind of taken a photo texture and um, uh, sort of converted it into something PBR and then and made a few changes to it. Um, but yeah, and obviously all of the Brushify packs now include uh, this paint layer uh, as standard. Um, and yeah, you can use that to, to sort of learn from and, and see how this works.